it's a lot easier to get hold of, of documents than it was before. Um, the internet has made it much easier to find, um, to download, and to, to open articles to read. Um, but what it hasn't really yet done is made it easier to collaborate when writing and then publishing. And um, when a scientist has finished sort of a first draft of an article, they'll, they'll often have to send it around um, to get feedback from others. And the way we do this, well, the way we used to do this is on horseback. So a scientist would package up his letter, send it across to a, another scientist somewhere else in the land, and they would read it. And if they liked it, they would send it back again um, with some comments, with, with the same horseman as well. Um, but that other reviewer might think, well, there's other people who might be interested in this, so I'll dispatch some other horses to go out to other places around the world. And so on, and so forth. And if this continued, eventually the whole world would be full of horses, and we'd all be walking around in big piles of, well, you get the picture. But we, we don't have that anymore. You know, we've moved on. We've moved on a lot, and we replaced horses with emails. So... Instead of sending horses around everywhere, we send emails around everywhere. And we're still all wallowing in piles of spam. Um, and it even gets more complicated, because I mentioned you know, scientists would send it to others for review. So we have this complicated process where you have authors, reviewers, publishers, and that, that's people in production, people doing copy editing, and then readers. And they're all accessing and trying to access this document at different times. But you know, this creates a whole load of problems because there are all these files going back and forth and you end up with, with lots of different versions of that same document. Um, not only do you get all of these versions of that same document and these long email chains that people tra try and keep track of, but you get a lot of time now spent formatting and typesetting documents ready for publication and so, you know, um, these documents going back and forth between authors, copy editors, typesetters, in order to get you know, what the author wrote originally into a format that's useful for the reader and that's, that's good for the reader. And this isn't about you know, pedanticness um, in terms of getting it right and getting margins perfectly correct. What it's about is taking what the author's written and putting it in a format that the readers and others will find most useful. There's also a big problem with maintaining and formatting references and citations. I mean, this is a big thing in science. I'm sure you're all you know, aware of the reference list at the end of a scientific paper come in lots of different forms and lots of different formats depending on the journal. But it's not limited to science. It was saw in the talk yesterday by Lisa, a great example where you know, there's a URL that no longer works. Like, What do you do with that reference? How do you properly uh, market and how do, you, how do you deal with it in future versions of that book? And then you also get comments on a paper, which means that you go back almost to the start. Some your supervisor may say, rewrite chapter one and you kind of have to go all the way back to the beginning and, and start this all over again. But it does, really doesn't have to be like this, and the way that the internet has revolutionized um, the distribution of articles can be brought into this whole process. And instead of sharing lots of files around and creating lots of versions of the same document, what we can do instead is keep the document in one place in the cloud and just allow people to access it at different times with different permissions so that they can do the things that they need to do. So the authors can all collaborate on that document at the same time. Maybe if it's a large project with lots of authors, you'd split it into sections and each would ha only have access to the chapter that they're, they're writing, but it would still be in one place so that when they access that, they know that they were working on the latest version of that document. When it went out to review, you could potentially at that point say authors you've submitted it to review, you can't edit it anymore, but that version of the document is then accessible by reviewers who can leave comments, potentially make track changes, um, and, and kind of go through a review process, whether that's editorial review or peer review um, for, for scientific papers. And similarly into copy editing, you know, there's a lot of work now, um, well, there's a lot of opportunity to take the technology that we have um, it was mentioned yesterday, HTML5 and XML, to convert behind the scenes um, into the different formats that are useful for output. And involved in that process are the production team who, who go through and make sure that this all works and all matches the output requirements of a particular journal or a particular publication. And then the readers can get access to this you know, on lots of different devices and lots of different you know, routes in, but still accessing the same version of a document. And so this is a... 
Probably should have put that up while I was just talking through them all. But yeah, one version of the document accessible by all. And so you don't email files around. You can still use email, but you're just sending a link. And that person clicks on and goes to the right version of the document. Quite importantly now, we can also do typesetting automatically in the background while you type. Um, so I'm a mathematician originally, so I use LaTeX um, or LaTeX, LaTeX, um, depending on how you want to pronounce it, um, for writing my papers. Um, and actually, that was the um, that was the reason, one of the reasons why I created, and me and my co-founder created Write LaTeX in the first place, which I'll talk about in a moment, is to make it easier for us to work with colleagues around the world and work with others in disciplines that didn't use LaTeX and were more used to working in Word. Um, LaTeX has lots of automatic reference styles and citation tools built in. Um, and I think the point about referencing and citations is that once it's in a standard structured format, it's very easy to do lots of different things with it. And what we just need to get away from is references being written out by hand, which then puts it all in a format that's, that's not useful for anything going forward. And finally, so the review tools to allow colleagues and supervisors to comment directly on a document. So this is one thing that I think Microsoft Word did really well. Um, the track changes works for lots of people, and the commenting system works for lots of people. And it's become a really familiar way of, of tracking changes and a really familiar way of commenting on a document. So I think the thing that we found is very important is that anything that we build to allow commenting needs to be as simple and as easy to use as what's provided in Microsoft Word. So now on to you know, one specific online collaborative editor. There are lots out there. I'm going to talk about this one because it's the one I'm most familiar with, because this is the one that my, me and my co-founder created in 2011. We used it in our lab and with other people around the world. We were based in Bristol at the time. Um, we've since moved to London. We've now got some funding, and we've been, we've been building it out. And we've, um, we've been building it out and growing. And actually, we've been having a really, really successful time recently. But why did we use LaTeX? Um, so aside from the fact that we were mathematicians and it's really good for maths, it does a lot of things with fonts that you don't get uh, with a lot of other, other compilers. So um, you can usually spot a LaTeX document in a pile of, of Word documents. It's, it's really clear because all the kerning has been done properly, all the adjustments have been made, and LaTeX really tries to avoid things that were mentioned yesterday with, with orphans and widows and, and section headings left at the foot of a page and so forth. It, it can work through all of that automatically. It's been created um, by a large and active community, so it's about 40 years old uh, now, and it's been developed, and there's a, there's a whole load of stuff behind the scenes, which is really great, and there are lots of packages for extending it. But what no one had done at all was bring it into the internet age, and no one had made it easy to use. You had to download a three gigabyte file and install it on your computer, and then it wouldn't work. So then you have to look at why it wouldn't work, and you'd not installed Ghost Script or something. And half the people just fell out at that point and went, well, I'm just going back to Word. So we took LaTeX, and we run it in the browser. So as a user, all you have to do is go to a web browser, click to create a new paper, and you're there in an editor, in an editing environment, and all of the technology is running behind the scenes. And we found this was something we built for our own use, but it got picked up on Hacker News a couple of times. Um, and we quickly grown to, in last year we had 50,000 authors sign up from 170 countries around the world. We've now got nearly 150,000 authors signed up. We had over 500,000 documents created. Um, and they range from you know, projects, collaborative projects, to CVs, to wedding invitations we've had created on the site, to posters, to all sorts of different things because of the versatility and because people are using it for things they want to get professionally typed. Up. And the really nice thing for us is that it's not just people using this who already knew about LaTeX, already knew how to use these kind of tools. We have a lot of users who are students, um, you know, undergraduate students and college students who are using it as their first time writing a collaborative paper together. And, you know, and they really like it because it's really easy to use. They can download, they can open a template um, that someone's provided and get started really easily. Their supervisor or their lecturers can provide them with templates to open and get started um, and work and collaborate and collaborate with their supervisor if they need to um, to get to a final published poster or published paper. Um, but the authors also 
We have a lot of use by researchers who are collaborating. So Artem was working at McGill University in Montreal. He was collaborating with um, David from the Moffitt Cancer Center in Florida. He was collaborating with Jacob um, from the University of Oxford in the UK. They wrote a paper together on our service in only four days, and they wrote a nice blog post afterwards saying how great it was and how easy it was to use. But then the point they made was they'd, they put it on the archive so people could access it, but it was then going to go off into peer review. And potentially it was going to take another nine months before it emerged from that peer review process for others to read as a published and, if you like, as a vetted article. So what we've gone on to do and what we're now taking right later, right later on to is to create or to expand out from the services we provide so that not only can you collaborate as authors, but we're also inviting reviewers and editors and editorial teams from journals to, to use the platform as well to streamline the rest of this publication process. The other reason for a switch to the name Overleaf um, is because we've been building a rich text mode on top of LaTeX so that you no longer need to know the code if in order to edit and in order to produce a document. So much like you used to need to know HTML to produce a blog, WordPress and others made it really easy now such that you can create your own blog without knowing that you're writing any code at all. It's all there. You can switch back to it if you want to and you can do lots of, if you know how to, but if you don't want to, if you just want to get your paper or your, your blog published professionally on, on a site, you can do that with WordPress. And we're trying to make it as easy for authors to do the same with technical and um, scientific documents. We've also introduced a commenting mode recently. It's still in development, still in beta, but in essence, it's one button to click, which pops open a window. You type in a comment, and it's there at the point your, your mouse was when you clicked. Uh, your, your cursor was when you clicked. You can reply to comments. Um, it gives you the name of the author, the timestamp, and you can close them when you're done. And we built this to be as simple as possible. We built this to be as simple as possible so that you know, supervisors could use this to give um, feedback to their students. And one of the reasons we built this was because supervisors were getting in touch with us saying, I love your product. It's really great. But my supervisor's now just asked me to produce a Word version so that he can leave comments on it, <laughs> which doesn't help anyone. So you know, a lot of these tools that we're trying to build in, we're trying to build them you know, to solve a real problem that either the author or the supervisor has. And yes, this, uh, this graphic just illustrates certainly how, how, how it goes and how it's happened a lot of times. The, the student writes on a computer, the supervisor prints it out and writes by hand some comments, and revision, 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 why on earth did I come to grad school? Uh, so we're trying to take away some of this pain, not just um, for the students, but for others who have to do that process. You know, the supervisors maybe got one student, but an editor will have hundreds of papers to, to work on and to mark. But an important thing for us is that this sort of the structured um, details and the data behind the document are always available. So you can always switch back to source mode if you want to edit the LaTeX. Um, when you submit this across to journals and publish and submit this across to different places, we pass across all of the metadata and all of the information that's behind the paper that you've produced. And indeed, we're making it easier to pass those files across. And through APIs that the different services have, you can now submit your paper through to over half a dozen, uh, sorry, over a dozen different open access journals. We also um, let you submit it to other services such as Rubrik for independent peer review or to editorial services. And we're kind of growing and expanding that range. But the important thing that we're doing is not just passing across the PDF, but passing across all the source files. So that structured um, information that we provide in LaTeX format at the moment can be converted to XML, can be used, and can be used to make the rest of the process a lot more streamlined and a lot simpler. And we've worked with publishers to provide um, branded versions of the editor um, streamlined versions of their templates and, and dedicated uh, submission portals for, for their authors. And we've had around 70 submissions through to, to F1000 Research and PeerJ, which are two open, open access uh, life sciences journals that we've been working with over the past year. And I just want to close by saying that, you know, as well as the... Um, as well as the things that author tell, or the authors tell us that they like, uh, we're now starting to see through these, this work we're doing with publishers how the editorial teams and the production teams are also benefiting from what we're doing. Um, so if you'd like to find out more, come to overleaf.com or, or grab me afterwards and say hello.
Hopefully this works on the other side. <coughs>